And sadly, here in Cumbria, we've had over a thousand COVID related deaths here. At one point earlier in the year, we were the second highest place outside of London needing emergency care beds. And our County Council Infection and Prevention colleagues have been working with over 400 residential homes and community care establishments since March 2020. And it's fantastic news that our colleagues, particularly in primary care, have managed to roll out the vaccine to over 300,000 people in Cumbria so far. An absolutely amazing feat. And on top of these demands, you know, we've needed to work really very differently. We've been implementing remote consultations, adapting to working in virtual teams, and in some cases, working from home or actually in different roles. Amazing achievements brought about by amazing people working in health and care alongside our third sector colleagues and our volunteer partners. I don't think anyone really would have imagined before the, the pandemic just what we'd be capable of. And it's particularly amazing because surveys before the pandemic were telling us that many of our people were already going the extra mile and were perhaps a little bit tired and demotivated and that workplace stress was increasing year on year. So one thing COVID has done for us is really shone a spotlight on how important the well-being of our caregivers is. As public sectors, we have really responded well, providing lots of information on our, to our staff on how to stay well and access well-being and psychological services. But staff are telling us that we're still not prioritising well-being on a day-to-day -day basis. We know that we should be taking regular breaks, but how often do we get to the end of the day and realise, actually, I didn't really get time for lunch today? As leaders of teams and those working in well-being roles, how well are we looking after ourselves and modelling those healthy working behaviours? Sometimes you really need to put your own oxygen mask on before we take care of others too. So today is about taking time to pause and consider how we provide ourselves and our teams with the opportunities to refresh and consider how we move forward in a way that we can support the well-being of our people, not just during COVID, but in every working day in the years to come. We'll hear from keynote speakers why workplace well-being is so important and what actions we can take as leaders, as well as learn some practical steps and insights from our workshops that you can take away and try with your teams from tomorrow. The remainder of the week, we've got a plethora of workshops for you and your colleagues working in health and care to experience and learn just how to stay well, but maybe try out some new self-care activities too. 